Wise Choice Ministries. I'm Evangelist Sophia Jeffrey, and I'd like to thank y'all for joining us tonight for our Friday Night Engage. You could have chose to be anywhere else tonight, but you are choosing to tune in with us, whether it's here live on Facebook or it will be on the replay. We would just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and you are truly welcome. Just a few things to um, to pass on to you. We would like for you that if you're tuning in to please do a check in on Facebook Live so that people can see and know that we are being live broadcasting live today. So click the like button and subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, or you can follow us in our um, on our website at www.wisechoiceministriesinc.com. We encourage all you guys to comment on our um, on our live and in the comment in the blocks so that you can be heard and we'll be able to get back with you, ask questions, also submit your prayer requests to us at any time because we believe in serving our um, serving others as Christ has displayed to us. So I'm going to um, call for Pastor Deborah Morrison to lead us with the opening scripture and our prayer. Pastor Deborah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Evangelist Sophia. Amen. And my scripture today is going to be coming from Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 18th through the 22nd verse. And I want to read the Amplified Bible version. And it reads, as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he noticed two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teaching and teacher and walking the same path of life that I walk. And I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him, becoming his disciples, believing and trusting in him and following his example. And going on further from there, he noticed two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them to follow him as his disciples. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him, becoming his disciples, believing and trusting in him and following his example. Amen. We thank God for the reading of his word and the hearers and the doers of his word. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, God. We bless you. We give you glory, God, for who you are, God. We thank you for um, the, the teaching that we have been learning about the disciples of the gospel, Father. Just like like you had an initial call for your disciples, God. You had an initial call for each and every one of us, God. And that call was to follow after you, to walk in ways that please you, to trust you, God, to imitate you in the earth, Father God. And God, we thank you for the call and, and the purposes that you have for each and every one of us um, on the line, God, for all of your people, God. We thank you, Father God. Give us a heart like the first disciples, God. Give us a mind like the first disciples, God, where they left everything, God, that when they heard your voice, then they heard your call, God, they dropped everything and followed after you, and you made them fishers of men, God, and this is what the Great Commission is all about, God, that we would go out and make disciples as your example, God, continue to strengthen each and every one of your people in the name of Jesus, God, we're going to give you the glory, we're going to give you the praise for everything, God, hallelujah, God, I want to say for the good, the bad, and the ugly, God, because because you have always been by our side. You said in your word, God, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so, Father God, we thank you that we can trust you, God. We can trust you and we can trust your word, God, that you are the God that's for us. And so, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look, yes, Lord, we trust you to give us everything that we need. And we just thank you, Father God. Thank you, Pastor Deborah, for that prayer and the scripture. 
And Lord, we just thank you. Now we're going to bring on and ask uh, Brother Travis Howard to give us a solo selection as we can praise and worship God in musical song. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you hear me? Thank you, Jesus. If you know the words, sing with me. Oh, he'll never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Jesus. There will be mountains I will have to climb. And there will be battles I will have to fight. Victory or defeat is up to me to decide. How can I expect to win if I never try? I just, glory, hallelujah. If you know the words, sing with me. Said I come to fire, y'all. That the road would be. And I don't believe he's brought us this far to leave us. Never said there wouldn't be trials. I never said I wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way I wanted to go. Oh, when my back is against the wall and I feel a hope is gone, I just lift my head up to the sky. Help me to be strong. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Said I come to fire, side from that the road would be. Hey, I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. When I can't see clearly, I know that you are with me, so I can. Glory, hallelujah. Said I come to fire. Started from that the road would be. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Said I can't give up now. Hey, I come too far from where I. Oh, y'all don't understand. Nobody said that it was gone. Hey, hey, that the road would be, and I don't believe he's brought me this, brought me this far. I can't give up now. Glory, hallelujah. Somebody give a praise. I come too far from where I And the road would be, and I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. I can't give up now. Somebody declare it over your life. Glory, hallelujah. Said I come too far, y'all, from where I am. 
No one said it would be easy. That the road would be and I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Yes, God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I can't give up now. That's right. That's right. We're not. There is no giving up in a Christian. There is no giving up when we already know that Christ has already given us the victory. He said it's already done. When he said it was finished, his part was done. So there is no reason to give up. We just got to remember that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake him. And that's why it's so important for us to know the word, because when we know the word and we in those midnight hours and we in, we in those valley experiences, we can recall the word, put him in remembrance of his word and allow that word to minister us to us. David said he had to encourage himself in the word. So at times like that, when we don't know what's going on, when we don't know, when our back is up against the wall, we just need to remember, he said he would never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm going to hold on to the word and just trust God and believe that he could do what only he can do. So brother Travis, we thank you for that selection. That, 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 is, a, that is ministering to us. And we just thank you for that. So God, we thank you for that word. Now for some more motivation, we have Deacon Ron, who's going to give us a motivational word to encourage us and let us know what God has placed in his heart. Deacon Ron, thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for that uh, selection of uh, Brother Travis. That goes right into my motivational word for this evening. And, uh, you know, we know that, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we know that God works on Oh, he likes us to all be on one accord. So, um, you know, um, so without further ado, I'll just tell you uh, my motivational, my inspirational story for today. Um, I was out today and I encountered a young man and uh, we got to talking and uh, I started talking to him about, about, um, about church. And, uh, you know, I, I asked him, you know, if he had given his life to Christ and he, he said he did. So we, we uh, talked a little bit about that. And he, you know, he talked, uh, he was a younger guy. He, uh, he said that, you know, he gave his life to Christ, but uh, he's not living. Um, he's not living like he, like, he, uh, like he gave his life to Christ. So I just encouraged him. I said, hey, you know, we're, we're none of us are perfect. And uh, I said, we all going through something. And he, uh, he began to tell me that he said, well, yeah, you know, he said, I'm an alcoholic. And he said, I drink. Um, uh, I think he said he drank about four, four to six, uh, 16 ounce uh, cans of, of beer every night. So I asked him, I said, uh, I said, well, why, why do you think you're drinking so much? Or, you know, what is this stemming from? So he said, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm lonely. I'll be at home. I don't have anything to do. And, uh, you know, this is just something that I do to pass the time. So I asked him, I said, well, do you have a relationship with God? And he said, uh, he said, I do. He said, I used to go to church, but, um, you know, the, the, I guess his pastor uh, had died. And since his pastor had died, he hadn't been to church. And I guess this has been uh, in, in a couple of years. So he said, uh, you know, since his pastor had died, he, uh, he, he, you know, he backslid and started drinking. And, and, and uh, he don't hang out in the streets, he say, but he say, just go home and he drink because uh, that's 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 what he do to to um, uh, to make himself feel feel good. He said, "Don't have a girlfriend, or anything like that." So I, I told him, I said, "Well, you know, I said you need to get to the root of your problem as to why you're drinking, why you're lonely." I said, "You know, if you spend time with the Lord and have a relationship with Him, then I said, you know, He'll make all of that better in your life." So we uh, we just talked about that for a while, and and. Um, after he got to his destination, I said, well, um, I said, is there anything that I can do for you? And uh, he said, well, yeah, you know. So but anyway, but we had talked. And, and as we were speaking, he said, well, you know, I'm glad that we had this conversation. I said, well, yeah, you know. I said, well, you know, we all go through something. I said, if, you don't, uh, if you're not transparent, then, you know, no one can help you with what you're going through. And I said, you know, I really appreciate 
you for being transparent, you know, with the sh a total stranger. And I said, you know, I, I believe that the, that, that the, um, the, the body is fitted and joined together where each, each joint supplies the next, which is us as humans. So I said, you know, you telling me what you're experiencing and, uh, you know, without even knowing me, I said, you know, I, I hope that I can give you some, some, uh, some, uh, some, some answers to what you're going through. So at the end, and at the end of the, uh, the, the, the ride, he said, uh, well, yeah, you know, I appreciate you talking to me. And, uh, so I, I, uh, I, I, after that, I prayed, I prayed for him, you know, that, that guy would just touch his heart and take the, the taste of alcohol from his, from his, from his mouth. Um, so, you know, what I got, I mean, he helped me, you know, he probably thought that I helped him and, uh, but he helped me a lot because I know that we all go through something, but if we're not transparent and if we don't, you know, uh, talk to each other and let each other know what, what we're experiencing, then we don't know what to pray for you about. We don't know what to intercede with you about. And, uh, you know, we all have something that, that we're going through. So, um, yeah, you know, after I prayed for him, I felt really good. And, uh, you know, and, and, but, you know, the, the, I guess the jits of it is that, you know, when you encounter somebody, you know, the, the Lord will always um, make, a, make a conversation available to where uh, it, it'll be an easygoing conversation. And then you can give that person what they need for the day or vice versa. That person can help you out. But if you're not transparent and if you keep your mouth closed, then, you know, you know, that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to uh, to keep our mouth closed and not testify about what we're going through and just suffer in silence. But I'm glad that 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 young man was transparent and he was uh, able to um uh, tell me what he was going through and I, I I knew what to pray for him about and like I said you know he thought that I helped him but he helped me because he taught me that you know even as men you know we you know we we, we tend to harbor our feelings you know we don't we don't talk a whole lot about what we're going through and what we're feeling but you know again you know uh, when we're transparent then you know we can allow individuals to speak in our lives and make things better for us so, you know, that's my uh, inspirational word for the day. Just uh, continue to be transparent and make yourself available uh, for people to speak into your life. Amen. 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 That, thank you for that, sharing that testimony. Um, so many people are hurting and like you say, suffering silence. That's not God's will for your life. God has brought the church together to be a community of the love of Christ. And when we are vulnerable to tell people that uh, that we know or that we can trust, or sometimes God will give a listening ear to a stranger, when we open up ourselves and tell them what the issue is, God uh, can place people in our lives on our path to that to can minister to them. So, uh, Deacon Ron, I'm quite sure that that was a, a God ordained. Um, transportation route today for you to be able to minister to that young man and in return he gave back to you so that's just God's way of ministering to his people uh through the church and we all need to be mindful of that so thank you for that word uh to let us know that we need to be sensitive to the people that we come across you know the bible speaks of we never know when we are entertaining angels so we need to be aware and sensitive of who we are ministering to because we can speak a word into their life and we get that divine echo, that boomerang effect to come back and bless ourselves as well. So thank you for that, for being obedient, Deacon Ron. Now we're gonna move on to our offering and announcements by Pastor Deborah Morrison. Amen, thank you, amen. Uh, for our offering and our announcements, um, um, for Wise Choice Ministry, if you would like to give a donation, a, a love offering, or just an offering, you can give that at givelafly.com um, under Wise Choice Ministries um, Cash App. 
dollar sign Wise Choice Ministries. Um, you can give um, one of those ways um, to um, Wise Choice Ministry. We're also in the midst of our building fund. If you would like to make a donation to our building fund, we would gracefully appreciate that um, as we continue to do what the Lord has called us to do. Amen. Um, if anybody had wanted to pay tithes and offerings, I always like to say this, especially tithes. If you're giving tithes and you have a local church that you are a member of, then your tithe should be paid to your local ministry, your local church, my God, where you're being fed at, where your membership is at. Amen. We don't want nobody tied that don't belong to us. Amen. And so we thank God for you. And all of those that give, we thank God for you. Also, as for announcement, we want you to join us for our Bible study is every Thursday um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Wise Choice Ministry um, uh, interactive no, WCM Interactive Bible Study page. And um, our theme for February, in case you didn't know, is the disciple learning from the disciples of the gospel. And that's coming from Luke 9 and 23. And then our next Friday night engaged service will be Friday, March the 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wise Choice Ministry Facebook page. Also coming up next Friday, if I was in a building around here, I would say next Friday, come on now, next Friday, um, WCMC clergy uh, will be have, we will be having prayer night on February the 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our uh, Wise Choice Ministry Facebook page. Um, pa myself, I will be um, leading the prayer on that night and we encourage you to please inbox us your prayer requests, email us your prayer requests. We want to pray for you. Amen. We don't mind praying for you. Amen. So that's the end of our announcements. Um, I want to say good, have a good God bless you evening as we continue with the remainder of our services. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Everyone, let's govern ourselves accordingly to the announcements and uh, blessing the, uh, the offering and uh, being a blessing into the kingdom of God. Uh, now it's time for us to receive uh, some manna, fresh manna from heaven. Our very own Pastor Shana Wise will be uh, giving the word, and I know that God has uh, filled her up and now he, she is going to unload everything that was given to her uh so we're gonna uh hold on to our seats and uh have some listening ears and be ready for a word from god through pastor shana wise thank you ma'am amen 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 good evening everybody good evening i am glad to be back for another Friday night engage at Wise Choice Ministries, amen. A few Fridays ago, this time I was in Honduras on a missionary trip. But this week I am back, amen, and I am ready to preach, amen, amen. I wanna just uh, give a special shout out, public thanks to Pastor Morrison, Deacon Wise, Mother Wallace, for holding it down um, while me and evangelists were gone, amen. And all of those of uh, Wise Choice Ministries that are part of the ministry that helps this ministry to go forward. Um, again, thank you guys for, um, you know, just keeping the pace, keeping the pace. It's just a blessing to be able to go away and, and things are still, um, uh, going according to schedule. So thank you guys. Um, we are on our second month of our discipleship there series. Um, starting in January, back in December, God has spoke to me. He said, you need to do discipleship for starting off at the beginning of the year. And I said, okay. And then it spilled over into this month. Um, this is a very important topic. It's very vital to the church. We have to um, understand what being a disciple is, 
You need to understand what that looks like. And we also need all the tools that we can get to be the best disciples that we can be for Christ. Um, disciples make disciples. God expects us to uh, be discipling. He expects us to evangelize. He expects us to witness. He expects us to pray. He expects us to have a relationship with him and with his children. And he expects us to make disciples. So if you haven't um, joined um, us on Bible study or our Friday Night Engage, since January, we have a whole arsenal of teaching. So you can go back and watch all the replays. We have blog posts. Um, all kind of materials on discipleship, amen, on disciples. Jesus never called us Christians. He called us disciples, amen. So tonight I'm going to continue on with the teaching um, concerning disciples. But before um, we get started, I'm going to open up in a word of prayer and we're just going to get started. Uh, so Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for one more day. We thank you for this time. Father God of fellowship, Father God of worship time, we have set aside this time in our lives to hear what you have to say to us, Father God. Father God, let us uh, receive the revelation of the word. Father God, let us tonight, Father God, know um, what your word says uh, concerning us, Father God. Father God, I pray that somebody um, that's on here tonight or maybe on the replay, Father God, that this word will touch, Father God, or they might want to give their life to Christ on tonight, Father God. For Father God, we do show up for the one, the ones, Father God. This is what it's all about, Father God. So we just bless you in advance. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Also, too, wanted to um, thank uh, Brother Travis Howard for singing that song, I Don't Feel No Ways Tired. I ain't heard that song in a minute. That's one of them old Baptist songs we grew up on back in the day. What you know about that, Brother Travis? <laughs> That's one of them old uh, deacon songs back in the day. Um, still relevant in 2022. Amen. So continue on praising the Lord, growing in the Lord and in your gift. Amen. Amen. So tonight, as I was um, uh, preparing this lesson and, um, and meditation on what I, uh, the Lord would have for me to share, um, he uh, brought me to John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was not necessarily one of the 12 disciples. John the, the Baptist was John the Baptist, amen. He prepared the way for the Messiah. But tonight, I want to examine his testimony to his disciples. I think there's going to be a very, there's a, um, there's a lesson that we can get for, from John the Baptist, amen. He, when I read these passages of scripture, amen, it just really opened my eyes to, wow, wow, truly, this, this was a man of God. And he knew how to transition his disciples to follow Jesus. So um, real quickly, um, all of us, I'm going to uh, just read a little bit. And then if you have your word, um, you can go to John chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. That's where I, the first scripture that I'm going to be coming from. But we all have to know that we all have been given God, we have all been given God-given influence and purpose. But what matters is how we use it for Christ's sake. John the Baptist had disciples of his own. That means he had his own followers. But he was able to transition them to follow Christ and not him. The body of Christ is to adhere to this powerful lesson from John which is not building a name for the local church or seeing how many followers we can get. Rather, it's about getting others to follow Christ. We must be able to disciple others, but our role in their lives is to be the support system, the church, the community, the fellowship. 
with their walk and relationship with Christ. So again, yes, we are to disciple others, but we got to know our role in that discipleship process. We are not each other's God. Amen. Sometimes we see that happening though. We are not we are the ones to, when we are discipling somebody else, we are being that support system, that mentor, that community, that fellowship. But the whole point in the process of discipling is for us to help one another strengthen our walk with Christ. Let's not miss this. So let's, let's see what the scriptures say. Let's join me in John chapter one, verses 35 through 42. I believe this is the New King James Version. It says again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, verse 36. And looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, seeing them following, said to them, what do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated to say, teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. Then they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. And now, well, it, and now it was about the 10th hour, verse 40. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated to the, translated to Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And now when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, son of Jonah. You should be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Now, this passage right here, this is the first disciples of Christ. So if you was to look into your Bibles, look into your commentary, these are the first of the 12, all right? These are the first of the 12. Where did they come from? They came from John the Baptist, all right? So I got a question to ask everybody. Have you ever shared your testimony to your peers and they ended up following Christ? Or have you ever had a circle of influence, followers, loyal friends, or family, and because of your word, you got them to focus less on you and your relationship and more on Christ? That's just a question that make you want to say, hmm. So again, the last time you witnessed and you testified to somebody, did they follow Christ? And but but see, this is what John did in this passage of scripture. With excitement, he announced Jesus as the Lamb of God. By John's word alone, it caused others, watch this, to immediately follow Christ. When was the last time somebody immediately followed Christ because of what you say? John's testimony should have us re-examining our own testimony and witness for Christ. You know, look at the scripture. And five words, behold the Lamb of God. Just in five words cause others to follow Christ immediately. A lot of times we want to sit up here and uh, explain this long drawn out story about why people should give their life to Christ. With John the Baptist, all he had to say was five words. Behold, behold. You know, so, so one thing we have to understand is that John was the one called to prepare the way for Christ, right? So in the way he chose to live his life, teach and preach, John focused and the mission was getting the people's hearts ready to receive Christ. He was teaching people to repent of their sins and be baptized with water. Yet another part of John's teaching was that one was coming that would take away the sins of the world. When John saw Jesus, he knew that his ministry role, watch this, 
was changing from preparing the people to getting them to follow Jesus. I'm building here, but I, we really don't need, we cannot miss this because of, that's the problem with a lot of people in church. Sometimes they don't get the memo that their role has changed. Their role has changed. John got the memo though. Praise God. Praise God. When John said, behold the Lamb of God, we have to understand to behold something is different from seeing something or just looking at something. Because when you behold something, that means you shift your purpose and you are intentionally focused on a particular person or object. John didn't say, see the Lamb of God. Come on, somebody. John didn't say, look at the Lamb of God. No, he said, behold, the Lamb of God, of God. See, 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 that lets me know what type of testimony. See, John had, a, a, if I could say it, he had a, a, a art with his testimony. See, he just didn't um, say, um, many words he chose his words carefully and when he said behold see when when you behold christ come on somebody see see it's a one thing to look at christ and and, and see him but see when you behold him see there's a change that happens there's a change that happens because there's no way you can behold christ and you don't follow him See, that's why a lot of people don't follow him because they're just glancing. They're just looking. They're seeing what they want to see. But when you behold him, oh, come on, somebody. I'm trying not to get too started with my preaching. But, but, see, but see, that's how we as disciples of Christ, we got to get people to behold him. When was the last time you ushered people into the presence of Jesus and got them to focus solely on him? Well, if you haven't in a while, it's okay. Let me tell you the secret of to do this. When you're able to behold him for yourself, see, when you spend time with him for yourself and you get in his presence and you and you sit there and you just rest and your whole focus and intent is on Jesus. Then you will learn how to get others to behold him. That experience will transfer. That experience will set the atmosphere. Because see, when you behold Christ, you enter into a different atmospheric realm. And when you get into that realm, now, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about worship. I'm talking about just being in the presence of God. And you can do nothing there but just soak in. Hallelujah. The King. When you behold Jesus in all his majesty, in all his glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, I, I, I'm just doing a little exercise right here. See, when you behold Christ, mm, hallelujah, hallelujah, the, 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 the atmosphere changes. Hallelujah. And the longer you stay there, the more you're transformed. See, this was easy for John to do. You see, because John had a habit of doing this even when he was in his mama's womb. I got a feeling that John, even as an infant in Elizabeth's womb, you got to understand that he leaped. See, we have to understand the point that John leaped in his mama's womb. We have to understand that that only took place when Mary starts speaking. Mm, about what God was doing in her. She was speaking about the Christ in her belly. Well, John heard it in the spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. And he beheld 
hallelujah, the word, the transfer. See, he was in the atmosphere of the praise and worship of Mary and Elizabeth, because at that moment, if you don't believe me, go back and read Luke chapter one. At that moment, hallelujah, Mary and Elizabeth, hallelujah, was in the atmosphere of praise and worship of what God was doing in the earth realm, hallelujah. The atmosphere had changed. They was beholding God with their testimony between these two women. And because of that, the infant John in the womb had to respond, hallelujah, because he was beholding Christ. Now, I know this teaching is a little deep, but it's not really that, that complicated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's really not that hard. Hallelujah. Especially when you have behold Christ for yourself. Now, if you have never uh, been able to behold him, if you have never seen him in that light, then this teaching that I'm giving may be a little bit too much to comprehend, hallelujah. But for those, hallelujah, that have been in the presence, hallelujah, of the Lamb of God. <laughs> so I wanna ask you a question. When was the last time you beheld him? Whew. All right, let me slow it down. Let me slow it down. I'm getting excited already because, see, I, I want to just really go there, but I got a little bit more teaching to do because John is testifying to his disciples. Let's see what else Brother John got to say about Jesus. Let's see what else John testify to his disciples about the Christ. Join me in John chapter three, verse 22 through 36. And I'm sorry, my, my head and stuff keep going in and out, my ponytail and stuff, but just focus on the words, amen. We'll get the video right later, hallelujah. John chapter three. Verses 22 through 36. Now, this one, the first one, John's role, this was the first disciples following Jesus. In this passage of scripture, now we find John exalting Christ. To who? Not to anybody. He's exalting Christ to his disciples. So let's see what John got to say. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now, John also was baptizing in Anion near Salim because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. For John had not been thrown into prison. Verse 25. Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the, uh, the Jordan to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing and all are coming to see him. Now, let me put a pause right there. Jesus wasn't really, he wasn't doing the physical baptizing, his disciples was. So that's just a little background teaching, okay? Because we know what type of baptizing Jesus do, amen? But again, he was present. And, and, and you know, John and Andrew, they was, they was baptized. Verse 27, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. Now watch this, verse 30. He must 
increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is from is above all. He who is of earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testified and no one receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the spirit by measure. Mm. The father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the son has everlasting life, and he does not believe in the son should not see life but the wrath of God abides on him. Now, I just read a whole lot right there. But well, right here, John was setting the record straight. You know, back in the day, we used to have a saying. He was letting them know what time it is, right? There used to be this rapper back in the day named Flavor Flav, and he had a whole bunch of clocks on his neck. Neck. And then people ask, why you got all these clocks on your neck? He said, because you got to know what time it is. You know, I, I felt that in the spirit, Flame. I felt that. And that's what John was doing. John was like, let me throw my clock down and tell y'all what time it is up in here. Amen. John was intentional in the way he responded to his disciples. He was able to respond to questions and disputes amongst his disciples by turning them into teachable moments. See, that's a good leader. That is a good leader. When a leader can take arguments amongst the people and turn them into teachable moments, oh, that's a good leader right there. And that's what we need to learn how to do leaders. All of y'all that's in leadership positions, guess what? People are gonna come to you with some stuff and you gotta be able to tell them what time it is. You got to be able to teach them. Amen. Amen. Now, I was thinking to myself, isn't it interesting that the argument that arose between John's disciples and the Jews was about purification? Of all the things y'all could have argued about, really? Purification? <sighs> so, 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 so why was purification even an argument? The, here, I'm going to tell y'all the answer. The answer is that Jesus' ministry had started and a shift was taking place. That was the argument. That was the nature of the argument. See, see, Jesus' ministry had started. But you know what? Once again, John's disciples didn't get the memo. Even though they have been hearing John talk about this Jesus the whole time. See, they didn't have any listening ears on. You know, how many teachers we got in the room? I used to know these teachers, they were all the time to say, put your listening ears on, right? That means I'm up here teaching, but are you receiving what I'm giving you? So now John was like, okay, all right, all right. So let me, let me tell y'all what time it is. Let me tell y'all. John knew what was happening. John knew exactly what was happening, but his disciples didn't get the mes message. So what John decided to do in this moment was to testify. See, we don't understand how strong and how powerful our testimony is. He could have responded any other way. He said, no, nah, let me testify. Let me testify. Um, so here what was going on. It brought John joy that Jesus's earthly ministry was going forth. Now, when the last time you got happy for somebody whose ministry started? When the last time that brought you joy? See, there's so many lessons we can learn from John. You know, in the body of Christ, we should celebrate what God is doing in other people's lives. John said, you know what? But see, this just wasn't anybody. This was the Jesus that he would have been teaching about. So he's, he, he let his disciples know, guess what? While y'all up here arguing, I got joy. Oh, come on, somebody. See, that's a good leader right there. 
while y'all up here arguing over stuff that y'all didn't miss the whole picture, I got joy. I got joy that Jesus is on the scene. Amen. And, 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 and due to this fact, see, see, this is what happened when you have joy inside of you. See, when you have the joy, the Lord inside of you, you are able to not only respond righteously, not only teach righteously, but you're able to see what's really going on. That's why it's important to have joy and let nobody take your joy. That's why Satan always wants to attack the joy that we have, because he knows if he can take it from us, then we won't be able to see what's really going on. See what time it is, right? So listen to this. Due to this fact, John recognized that it was time for him, his works, his ministry, and his following to decrease so that Christ can increase. Now, ain't that something? This is what Joy did for John. He said, you know, I'm so joyful now. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't caught what's going on in the atmosphere. A shifting took place. So now that I recognize this, I'm so happy that all the works that I have done, now it's starting to come to an end. I can get ready to rest now because Christ is here. Amen. And, 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 and I believe too, at this point, John knew deep down inside that his time on earth was, being, was limited, right? It was limited. So this is what I admire so much about John, he like telling his disciples, look, now I got to decrease and he got to increase. And then this is what I like more about his testimony is that he, he testified about who Christ is. He said, this one here about to give everlasting life. What? He said, he said he about to give some everlasting life. That baptizing that I've been doing and that you see them doing, Oh, that was just, that was just signifying what's about to happen. He said, that's why I got so much joy because I knew every time I brought somebody down and brought them up, that was just a, that was just a, a public declaration. That was just a, a earthly thing, a, a rededicating their life to God, a repenting of their sins. But this one has showed up and this one here, he's about to baptize with fire see his baptism oh let me i'm jumping ahead and i'm trying not to get ahead see his baptism y'all arguing over purification and y'all can't even see that the one that's a really about to purify us from sin he's here so now i got a decrease jesus john knew that it was important for his disciples focus to shift from the work that they had done together now to following Jesus, amen? So he was letting them know, hey, fellas, guess what? We about to pack this show up right here, right? We about to pack it up. We about to pack this ministry work up. This about to shut down right here. If I, now I'm just making it as plain as I can make it, right? He's saying, guess what? All that we have done, guess what? It's, 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 we don't have to do this no more. It's time for you to follow him. Amen. And, and, and I just, I really, just really admire John the Baptist. This lets me know, it speaks so many volumes of his character, his integrity, the type of leader he was, the type of man of God that he was. He always knew what his assignment was. And he was secure in that role. And when Jesus stepped on the scene, he didn't have to be intimidated. He didn't have to, he, 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 he was so secure. And when Christ stepped on the scene, he knew when now it's time for me to step down. Oh, if we have more leaders, hmm. oh, that just gave me chills. Let me pause for the cause real quick. If we have more leaders, that can recognize when it was time for, when their work was accomplished and it's time for them to step down so that somebody else, it's time for them to come up. 
Could you imagine what type of world this would be? We're not just talking with the church. We're talking, this, this translates over e- even into the workforce because there's a lot of people that have overstayed their time. Your assignments up. But how many people stay way past time? And then a lot of times what happens is when you, you stay in longer, what happens is that you become ineffective. And it hurts the people that's under you. It hurts the ones that's following you. We have to know that we're not God. We have to know that 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 we're not the, you know, we have a, a certain set time for our, our, our ministry roles and our leadership roles. And we have to recognize when God is moving. And part of this movement is as a leader, we got to be able to release people and urge them to now you, it's time for you to go. And in John's case, he said, it's time to follow Christ. My Lord, I just got chills. I got to let that sit in because, because, because we really can't miss this. My goodness, my goodness. Hmm. <laughs> And and that's what we can learn today in church is that we need to be able to recognize, hear me closely, leaders, when it's time to shift. I'm going to say that again. And somebody need to put that in the comments. We need to recognize when it's time to shift. We need to recognize that what we used to do was for that time. But now there's been a shift and now it's time to change directions and go a different way. And that's why a lot of ministries, not just ministries, but even people in their personal lives are stagnant because they refuse to shift. They refuse to recognize a change has happened. But guess what it takes? Sometimes when a shift happens, that means sometimes we got to (laughs) decrease. John said, I got to, I got to decrease so that he can increase. And I just want to prophetically put that out there. If there's things that's going on in your life and your uh, ministry on your job and you just feeling stagnant and ineffective, then re-examine what areas of your life do you need to decrease in so that Christ can increase more. Because remember, this his, this is his kingdom. It ain't ours. We are the workers in the vineyard. Christ is king and will always be king. Amen. And all the work that we do, it's got to be for the Lord. Amen. Somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. I mean, there's some deep teaching. There's some different type of teaching here. It was different for me, but it must be talked about. Because even now, there's a shifting that has happened in the earth realm from the pandemic. The methods that the church has used decades ago, that's not going to work in 2022 and moving forward. We might be on the verge of a war. We don't know what's about to happen, but we need to be sensitive in the Holy Spirit, just like John was. We need to be beholding Christ to the point that we see what God's hand is doing in the earth realm now. Because guess what? God is still moving. Right? God is still moving, everybody. God is still in control. Amen? But now, if ever was a time for us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and what God is doing in the earth, now is the time. And if we're not able to tap in now, then we need to examine, maybe we just up too high and we need to come on down and decrease. That looks like humbling yourself. All right, I'm wrapping up. Time is about um, 
Hey man, time is, is wrapping up, wrapping up. So I have a challenge. I challenge you this week to examine your life and see what areas you need to decrease in so that Christ can increase. That is this week's challenge to Christ's disciples. Amen. Look at the areas of your life. Like John. John was still John and everything God called him to be. And, and, and guess what? He didn't have a problem humbling himself. Matter of fact, John didn't even have to be humble because he recognized what time it was. He knew what was going on. John had joy. John had joy, y'all. Where's your joy today, saints? And let me pause right there, just prophetically say that. I got a uh, in my office right now, I'm pointing over to this sign. I got a sign, and, and on the saying, it says, Joy Restored. And I picked that uh, specifically for uh, my saying. I can switch the letters around and stuff. But I picked that up because that is a specific prayer that I have been praying for different individuals in my lives. The, the prayer has been that their joy be restored. Because for some, you know, uh, some Somewhere along the line, it got buried. It got buried within them. And now they don't even recognize that they have joy available. So joy restored. And I pray for somebody who's watching and listening that if you feel like you have lost your joy, I, I pray that your joy be restored, restored. Amen. John said, my joy has been fulfilled. Why? Because he beheld Christ. He saw Christ in the, in the natural and in the spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. And see, really, that's what it looks like to behold Christ. When you see him in the spirit. When the words on the paper become revelation. Come on, somebody. When, when, when like that first sentence in the book of Revelation, when John said, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. You got to understand that that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he wants us to get revelation of the word. And it's said when we get the revelation of the word, hallelujah, that brings joy. A lot of people are not having joy because they're not receiving revelation. Oh, come on, hold on. I'm just flowing. They're not receiving revelation for any situation in your life. And so when you are going through things and you don't understand what's going on, hallelujah, and, and, and then, but you go to the word and you're looking and you're looking and you're looking, but things ain't changing, it's probably because God never gave his words just to be information and words on the paper. He gave it to be revelation. So I speak revelation on tonight. In the name of Jesus we're in the, this is the hour, saints. Look what's going on in our atmosphere. God has given us all ability to get revelation of the word through his Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, here's another um, challenge, um, question, so somebody can pick this in the chat. Examine your testimony. Is it leading others to want to follow Christ? And if your testimony is not leading others to want to follow Christ, what can you do differently to reach people? Notice I po posed in the question, what, now I didn't say what can the people in the church do or what can the pastor do or what can the evangelist do? No, what can you do differently to reach people? Remember, and that's what challenged me. I told the Lord this week when I was uh, putting together this message, I said, Lord, I want to get like John the Baptist. I want to be able to say, say it in five words or less. And people say, and people start following Christ. John said five words. Behold the Lamb of God. And what happened? They followed him. I said, Lord, that's, 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 that's one of my God goals. That's one of my rela God relationship goals. Help me to master the testimony of Christ, where that when I speak, it comes out so powerful that people want to immediately follow Christ. You know, that's what I want to work on, right? Because if John can do it, I can do it too. And here's the last uh, question, and then we're going to get ready to close out and pray out. If you are a ministry leader, 
or have any type of leadership role? Are you being sensitive to the Holy Spirit regarding the ones you are leading? Are the ones that you had, are there ones that's amongst you that you have not released yet? Now I might, you know, a lot of pastors, they ain't gonna like me for that, but that's okay. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I just gotta say what, what, what I got. So if you are in ministry and you are in a leadership role, look amongst the people that you're leading. Are there some there that you need to release? And release means to promote, because sometimes it don't always mean sending them away. Sometimes people, need, you need to promote them, right? Sometimes you need to send people away to go follow somebody else. Or you may need to release somebody to start their own ministry. A lot of pastors don't get this, and a lot of pastors don't believe in this. But guess what? This is kingdom. And if you don't believe me, go back and reread the word we just read. If you don't believe me, because see, I'm getting this from the word. The, the John chapter one and the chapter three. Yeah, I'm getting it from there. If John released, if it was good enough for him, if Jesus released, <laughs> oh, if it was good enough for Jesus, what's your problem? And sometimes we have to just call out things in the spirit. We just do. Because it's crucial. Now is the hour. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And a lot of the laborers are not in the harvest because the leaders won't release them. Oh, I'm getting chills. Lord have mercy. Jesus! Release them. We as leaders, we have to understand that we are not God. We have to understand that people belong to God, not to us. We have a role in their life to disciple them. Now, there are some people that are meant to stay with us for a long period of time. So don't think you got to release everybody, but you got to have enough discernment and wisdom to know that God will send people to your house that are not supposed to stay there. But once again, if you're not decreasing and letting Christ increase, then you can't even see who you're supposed to release. Oh, my God. Woo. Holy Ghost. Crucial. Even even um, in the in the um, I'm talking about in the church, but even. There's a lot of businesses and companies, you know, that are not doing well because you keep on holding on to people that need to go. Ooh, those people are, are lowering your production levels. They need to go. They need to be released. Amen. We have to understand this too. Sometimes here's the one last thing. When we stay too long in a place that we're not supposed to be, like meaning we didn't overstay our welcome, then we're hindering the next person that's supposed to be there. We're holding them up because God got somebody else to come, but he can't even send them because you went away. I don't know why I'm going there, but I just have to, I have to put this out there. I have to. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because what did Jesus say? He said, go. Ye therefore and make disciples. You can't go if you're being still. Can't make disciples if you won't release them. I'm done. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. There's some heavy teaching, but it got to be taught. Amen. It got to be taught. And maybe this word ain't for everybody. And that's fine. But the word is the word. And on tonight that I'm getting to the conclusion, John the Baptist really showed us such a great example of how he responded to his disciples. He, he kept Christ first. It was all about Christ. 
It was never about him and his ministry. He knew he was sent to prepare the way. And when the way showed up, he said, okay, I, it's time for me to fall back. Mm, come on, come on. He, he knew, oh, the way that showed up. I came to prepare the way, but the capital W-A-Y, oh, he on the scene. I'm done. My assignment is complete. I'm out. He was like, let me drop the mic. <laughs> I'm out. I'd have done my work. Jesus is here. And so tonight I want to transition. You, you might be watching and you might be listening. You might be saying, you know, Pastor Shane, I want to know more about this Jesus that you're talking about. You know, I want to, I don't, I want to know, I want to be a disciple. I want to be a disciple of Christ. That, that might be you. You might have heard the words and you might say, you know what? I've been listening to your teaching, all these teachers and preaching. And I know I, I'm supposed to be a disciple of Christ. How can I become a disciple of Christ? Well, it's real easy. Now, let me get back out my notes. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna bring back up John the Baptist to testify one more time. Usually I do the Romans 9, um, 10, 9. Usually I do that. But I wanna uh, I wanna solidify this message with what John the Baptist says. In John chapter three, verse 35 through 36, we just read it, I'm gonna read it one more time. It says, the father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the son has everlasting life. And he does, who does not believe in the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abides in him. So that was John the Baptist's testimony about Christ. He said, if you believe in him, you're gonna have everlasting life. That's the requirement of being a disciple. Mm. The belief in number one, the lamb of God, the Messiah, the chosen one. His name is Jesus Christ. And he is God in the flesh. Amen. He came. He came to save us from sin. He died on the cross and he rose from the dead so that we may have everlasting life. And if you believe in that fact, in that fact, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Bible says you shall be saved. So if that's you on tonight and you have confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he died for your sins and that he rose from the dead to save you, you are saved. And guess what? You're a disciple of Christ. A disciple, now let's just break it down to the simplest terms. A disciple is a follower. A disciple is a follower. John had people to follow him but he was intentional to make sure that all his followers follow Christ and that's what a true disciple is a disciple is one who follows Christ and one who leads others to follow Christ amen so if that's you tonight and you have given your life to Christ if you have confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus we want to hear from you tonight in the description box, um, I did put the Zoom code in there. If you are on Zoom, you can join us after we go off Facebook Live. And we will welcome you into the family. Amen. Amen. Or if you are looking for a church home, you can also join us after the broadcast on that same Zoom code. Or you might just need prayer. Well, if that's you. You can join us on Zoom after the broadcast. If you don't have time to do that, guess what? We're on Facebook. You can inbox us or you can email us. We're here. We show up for you every week. We show up for the one because we're disciples of Christ. Amen. We're disciples of Christ. You know, I, I, I jokingly say we're no limit soldiers for Christ. Amen. And we are. We are, we, we, we show up, 
We show up despite how we feel, despite what we going through. We show up. Why? Because we have beheld our king and we know we know what this life is about. And we want others to experience this life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So that is all for tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening to this word. Amen. I, I thank God for, for everybody and everything that has taken place on tonight. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for your word. Father God, we thank you for your word that you make plain to us, Father God. Father God, we thank you that on tonight, Father God, you use John the Baptist to show us, Father God, on how we, how we should respond. Hallelujah to our followers, Father God, because you have given us all a circle of influence, Father God. You have given each and every one of us a circle of influence. But Father God, you expect us, Father God, to use that influence, Father God, to lead others to you, Father God, just like John the Baptist. Father God, and forgive us for all the times that we were prideful. We didn't humble ourselves, Father God. Father God, we didn't decrease so that you can increase. Father God, um, continue, Father God, to show us the areas in our lives where we need to humble ourselves more so that Christ can be exalted in our lives, Father God. Father God, we know it's not about us, but it's about the harvest. Father God, we know that souls is what's important to you, Father God. We know, Father God, that, that your children are important to you. Father, we know, Father God, that, that it is your heart for your children to know your son. And his name is Jesus Christ. So, Father God, just let your agenda continue to reign in our lives. Father God, let us yield our agenda to the kingdom agenda, Father God, so that you may get the glory and that your kingdom will grow. Father God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody. We will see everybody next week, Thursday, 7 o'clock, right here on Wise Choice Ministries. Good night.